if you are self-employed, you have to do accounting work. This is probably not a big surprise for you, but when you delve a little deeper into the topic of accounting, many things are not so clear cut. And I thought, why not just record a basic video where I discuss the things that every self-employed individual should really know about their accounting? The primary question is why bother? So what is the actual reason why we need to do accounting in the first place? Apart from the fact that the tax office regularly wants a tax return and we naturally want to do our accounting for that, self-employed individuals do not have payslips. This means that self-employed individuals do not have traditional income proofs like employees do. This applies to landlords, banks, etc. Do you often have to submit your last three payslips to prove how much you actually earn? And as a self-employed individual, you naturally don't have those because you don't receive payslips. In these cases, you must always submit a business evaluation, commonly referred to as a so-called evaluation, typically for the preceding three months or for the preceding 12 months. And this business evaluation, or BWA as an abbreviation, is an outcome that stems from your accounting procedures. This means that one goal of your accounting is to serve as proof of income for banks, landlords, and also for purposes such as calculating parental allowance. And in the case that you possess a legal entity other than a sole proprietorship, then the public also becomes an interested party. For instance, if you have a GmbH. If you have to publish your annual financial statements, which means the result of your accounting. And you can actually look up the annual financial statements, meaning the results of the accounting, online from all major corporations in Germany. Another interested party in this context are potential investors. Because you cannot just borrow from the bank, but also, for instance, from investors. And naturally, investors also want to know why you are doing this. Honestly, the public and investors are not typical recipients for sole proprietorships when it comes to your accounting. Your main objective in doing this is to have proof of your income and a basis for calculating taxes, specifically for income tax and potentially for trade tax purposes. The outcome of your accounting is the business evaluation BWA, also known as the so-called BWA report. BTW, I've already recorded a more in-depth vid on this. You can find it linked with other vids in the video description below. Another outcome of your accounting is the income surplus statement. Also, a more detailed video is available or alternatively, the profit and loss statement. This is very, very important. The income surplus statement and profit and loss statement are two different things calculated differently. I will explain that shortly. In the end, the final outcome of your accounting process is ultimately reflected in the document known as your tax return the tax assessment that you receive. For example, if you apply for a relatively high loan at the bank, they are usually not satisfied with a business evaluation from the last three months. They typically want your latest income tax return or looking at the last income tax assessment. And this brings us to a point that regularly causes a lot of confusion in practice, namely the way in which I actually produce this result. So when it comes to my accounting, there are fundamentally two options that exist in Germany for me to choose from. One type is the simple accounting, which is called the income surplus calculation. This income surplus calculation can, for example, made by all freelancers. However, there is also a second type, which is called double entry bookkeeping, or often referred to as business asset comparison. This means that when the tax office communicates with you, the letters often mention business asset comparison. This is double entry bookkeeping or accounting. This means accounting, double entry bookkeeping or comparison of business assets. These are all names for the same thing, namely the elaborate form of accounting. All larger companies in Germany must do this more elaborate form of accounting. For example, if you establish a corporation such as a UG or GmbH, you always have to create double entry bookkeeping with a balance sheet. And as a business owner in Germany, you are actually obligated to maintain double entry bookkeeping if your profit exceeds or your revenue exceeds a certain threshold in the last two years as per the legal requirements. That implies you are solely exempt from accounting if you were below the profit and annual turnover thresholds in the previous two years based on your financial records and calculations. You have the option to voluntarily prepare the profit and loss statement. At the very least, that is the theory. In practice, it actually happens that the tax office eventually sends you a letter and tells you, dear taxpayer, now you have exceeded the respective limits and you must determine your profit with the business asset comparison. That means when you receive this letter, you must start preparing a balance sheet. So to summarize once again, freelancers can always prepare an income surplus calculation, regardless of the amount of profit or revenue they generate. For business owners, one must always consider the profit and revenue. 
Additionally, in addition to profit and revenue, business owners have the ability to create a simplified income statement as well. If they are above the threshold, they must maintain more elaborate accounting records and prepare a balance sheet. However, you can also choose to consciously opt for the more elaborate form of accounting as a freelancer or small business owner. However, you should think carefully about it. That actually has no real benefits, except that it is more work. My personal recommendation is therefore that you always opt for the income expenditure calculation when you have the opportunity. Now, you might be wondering what the difference is. So what is the difference between a surplus calculation and a balance sheet, including profit and loss statement? Primarily, it's the way something is recorded. When preparing the income surplus calculation, you basically just book the bank statement more or less. This implies that an income is regarded as income for you when you observe the money in your account. And an expense is always considered an expense when you have made the payment. For a balance sheet, things get more complex. In this case, it's not the payment date that matters, but the date of performance, the invoice date. The difference becomes clear when we look at a very specific example. Assuming you provide a consulting service and the customer pays you only six months after the service is provided. In a balance sheet, you actually book the revenue at the time of performance and then you have an accounts receivable. This means you have already made this revenue and your profit has increased. If you are only paid in the subsequent year, the payment is completely neutral because you have already recorded the revenue when you essentially created the invoice and made the booking for the service. In a cash basis accounting, you disregard the date of performance and the invoice date. Revenue is only recorded when the money actually arrives in your account. So if you provide a service in October 2023, an accountant must already book this revenue in October 2023. If the invoice is only paid in January 2024, then the accountant actually has to pay taxes on this revenue in the tax return for 2023. The self-employed person who prepares an income surplus calculation records the revenue in 2024 and must pay taxes on it when filing the 2024 tax return. So when you do accounting, you create a complex construct called a balance sheet where there are a series of items that you, as someone who prepares a profit and loss statement, never have. You possess receivables, you possess open liabilities, but you also possess something similar to an inventory. When you buy goods, the purchase is immediately an expense for someone using the income expenditure calculation. When you create a balance sheet, you only change what is in your balance sheet. Then you suddenly have the balance sheet item goods. And this balance sheet item inventory only decreases when you actually sell it. That means the whole topic of accounting is significantly more complex. It's also not surprising. This type of accounting has been developed to cater to really large companies and not for small one-man shows. By the way, you should be familiar with the type of accounting, even if an accountant handles it because you prepare the documents differently. Upon receiving documents from a new client, the first thing I examine is their organization. To create a simplified profit and loss statement, only bank transactions must be recorded. Thus, the accurate sorting is always chronological based on the bank account transactions. Previously, the bank statement would always come first, followed by the invoices paid with that bank statement. This consistently indicates an income surplus calculation. For accountants, you always have three stacks or at least three stacks, namely all outgoing invoices, all incoming invoices, and all bank statements. And these are like three separate stacks because everything also needs to be booked separately as it always revolves around performance or it's about the invoice date and not the payment date. And that's how you should prepare your documents for your tax advisor as well. If you are doing accounting, then you basically need three folders. When you prepare an income surplus calculation, you require a folder and the order of sorting is determined by the bank statement. So we go through all this hassle to determine our profit. This means that the profit calculated with the income surplus statement or profit and loss statement is the basis for the income tax return and the trade tax return. That means technically you only have to do it once a year because you only file your tax return once a year. But why do we actually do our accounting more frequently? In fact, in most cases, it's because of the sales tax. Because you have to submit the sales tax either on a monthly, quarterly, or sometimes annual basis. That means you regularly submit advanced VAT returns. BTW, there's also a more detailed video below in the video description. And the value-added tax with the frequency of the VAT pre-registration actually forces us to continuously do accounting throughout the year. This would not be necessary at all for income tax or trade tax. 
By the way, I'd like to draw your attention to the GEO BD. You can also find a more detailed video on this in the video description below. The topic of GoBD is treated with great negligence by a large number of self-employed individuals. The GoBD actually requires us to record cash transactions on a daily basis and electronic transactions within a period of 10 days. This means that even if the frequency for your sales tax pre-registration is quarterly, you should record your business management within 10 days. The entire topic of GOBD is far too complex to explain it here at this point. Therefore, make sure to watch the video that I link to you again for more information. One of the most common questions I actually receive regarding accounting is, can I deduct these costs? Unfortunately, I didn't receive a proper invoice or I didn't receive any invoices at all. And here too, it's not enough to just say I need it for my accounting. We always have to look closely at what exactly we need it for. Do we need an invoice to create a profit and loss statement? To create a statement of income and expenses? Well, the invoicing regulations are actually stated in the Value Added Tax Act. This means that we primarily need a proper invoice for calculating the value added tax. This means that if you only receive a payment receipt, for example, from some software provider, often they only have Stripe receipts, for instance, these are not proper invoices, but you can still easily record these expenses in your accounting without any issues. You can reduce profit in income surplus calculation and profit and loss statement. However, you cannot consider them in value added tax calculation as the invoice details are regulated in the value added tax law. This means that if you have an improper invoice, while this invoice may violate the value added tax act, it does not necessarily violate the income tax act or the trade tax act. Therefore, at this juncture, here is the response to the most frequently asked question of all. If you did not receive a proper invoice, you can still take it into account in the accounting, but you simply cannot claim the value added tax. Claim input tax. When calculating the sales tax, this means you must record these expenses with 0% sales tax. I hope that with this video, I gave you a first good overview of the topic of accounting for self-employed individuals. If you have any questions, and you certainly do, feel free to write a comment below this video and I will gladly try to assist you in the comment section. And if you express that this entire thing is simply not your thing, that you would prefer to hand it over to an expert, then go ahead and do so. Find my recommendations linked below in the video description, also happy to link them here again for you. Or you can just watch the other videos on this channel. Then you can learn how to do it yourself, for instance this video or this video, 